Hello, and welcome to our video on how to be a star in interviews, facilitated by Katie Woolman, Director of Career and Professional Development at Lenore Ryan University. Congratulations. If you've been offered an interview, you have something that interests the company or supervisor. In fact, most companies will not spend time interviewing you if you don't fit what they need. The interview is a chance for them to get to know you as a person and assess your fit for the team and the job responsibilities that they need somebody to carry forth. Most job applicants feel that if they could just talk to the company in person, they would stand a good chance of getting the job offer. So this is your opportunity to do that. And there are a few simple things you can do to stand out, which is what we're gonna focus on today. First thing that is good to do is to step up your prep. Spend a lot of time researching the aspects of the interview before the day of the interview itself. One important aspect of the interview is yourself. You want to make sure that you research how you're going to be a fit for this opportunity and this company, which hopefully you've already done in preparing your marketing materials to apply for the job in the first place. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about how to prepare stories to tell in the interview, which are very effective in making your case for being a good fit. You want to research the company or the organization that you're interviewing with, spend time on their website, understand what they focus on, understand their mission, get a good sense of their values. This is also a good opportunity for you to develop questions that you may want to ask them in the interview. You wanna also make sure you are knowledgeable about the industry. If you're applying with a company, that focuses on an industry that you are not familiar with, then it's a very good idea to research the industry as a whole before going into the interview. You want to, as much as possible, research who you're going to be interviewing with or your interviewers. It's very easy these days to get a hold of someone's LinkedIn profile, for instance, and learn a little bit about the people that you'll be interviewing with and be prepared to ask them questions. You also want to practice. Practice makes progress. So one of the tips that we have for you is to do a mock interview or a practice interview before the real interview. We recommend that you practice with the method that you are going to interview with. So for instance, if your interview coming up is in person, then you can do a practice in-person interview. If you've got a virtual interview coming up, it's best to practice with the virtual platform that the company will be using, whether that is Zoom, Skype, Google Meetup, or any of the other virtual platforms that are now widely used and widely available. Practicing will help you increase your confidence level, which will be very important to showcase during your interview. With interviews, first impressions matter and carry a lot of weight. So these are some great ways to make sure that you're making a great first impression. Make sure that your phone is on its do not disturb setting. I know that we always have our phones with us everywhere we go these days. And so when you bring your phone into the interview, make sure that it's not going to create a distraction for you or the interviewer. You want to arrive early, but not too early. So a nice sweet spot is 10 to 15 minutes before the interview time begins is when you should be walking into the lobby of the organization or logging into your virtual interview. That's especially important because you wanna make sure that your technology is going to work. And sometimes we need a couple minutes to work out the kinks in order for that to happen. You wanna make sure that you've got appropriate attire. The attire or dress expectations are different for every company. So this is where your company research is going to come in handy. And it's also a great idea to ask amongst your network. For anyone who either works there already or is familiar with the organization, what the attire expectations are for either interviews or day-to-day -day, um, dress at the company. If your interview is being facilitated by a recruiter or by a human resources consultant, 
they are often good resources to get this information. Eye contact is definitely important in making a great first impression. And so you want to show eye contact with everyone you're interviewing with. When you do a virtual interview, you display eye contact by actually looking in your camera. So that's something that you want to practice and get comfortable with. You're not looking at the person's picture on your screen. You're actually looking in the camera to provide direct eye contact. So that can sometimes take a little bit of practice to feel comfortable with. These days, you may or may not shake hands. Usually a handshake has been part of that making a great first impression in an interview, having a nice, firm, confident handshake. And you may still have employers who are um, interested in shaking your hand. It's best to let the interviewer lead in this area. If you are not comfortable shaking hands, you can give the person a slight wave and say, I'm not comfortable shaking hands these days due to the pandemic, but it's great to meet you. I'm very happy to be here today. If you are comfortable with shaking hands, you are welcome to do so. We would just encourage you to bring some hand sanitizer with you and don't be shy about using it directly after you shake someone's hand. It's a great idea to bring a pad folio with you to every interview. This is a notebook where you can keep copies of your resume and have written down potential questions that you want to ask in the interview and be ready to take notes if your interviewers are giving you some details that you want to remember. For virtual interviews, what we want to also consider regarding our first impression is the lighting and the background of our interview space. The Career Center has fabulous spaces that you can reserve ahead of time for your virtual interviews. This can help ensure that you have a professional looking background and that your lighting is appropriate. But if you cannot use Career Center space or you prefer to use your room or other home type of setting, that's perfectly fine. It's okay if you do interviews from your bedroom. Just make sure that your bed is made and that your room looks neat and that there's nothing distracting in your background. In fact, a lot of people nowadays will use the blurred background setting in order to prevent anything from the background of your room to be distracting in your interview. So that is a good option. You also sometimes have to play around a little bit with the lighting in your room to ensure that your face is visible and that's really what you're looking for. We're not looking for studio lighting, stage lighting or anything like that, but typically you want your light source to be behind your computer so that your face is well lit and that your interviewer will be able to see you clearly. One of the first questions that you are likely to get in the actual interview itself is tell us a little bit about yourself. You have developed a 30 second commercial in your life and career planning class. And this is a great opportunity to share your 30 second commercial. Here is a visual that outlines a typical elevator pitch or 30 second commercial. And these are good elements to think about including in this answer. We want to think about this ahead of time so that we can avoid rambling or sharing details that aren't necessary in the context of the interview. So think about the job you're applying for and think about how you're going to introduce yourself relative to that opportunity. So you're introducing yourself. You are starting out with sort of an advertisement about yourself to build a connection with the interviewer. You want to clearly describe what you do next. So what is your major? What have you focused on academically and experientially? Have you had a great internship? Have you been in a sorority with lots of leadership opportunities? So you want to identify some of the experiences that you've had that you can talk about. Throughout the entire interview, but especially in your elevator pitch, you want to focus on your strengths. What makes you unique? What ideas do you bring to the table? Any recent activities that you've done that you're especially proud of or accomplishments do you especially want to talk about? Giving credit or compliments to others around you is a great idea. You may or may not include that in your elevator pitch, but that's a, a good thing to do in general 
acknowledging faculty or mentors or team members that might have helped you along the way. And then it's great to end your pitch with a question. And so in an interview, you can end your answer to this question with something like, I'm very excited to be here to continue learning about this opportunity. Can you tell me more about the day-to-day -day responsibilities of this position? And that's a great way to have more of a conversational style to your interview. So you do want to focus on your strengths. One of the suggestions that we share a lot in our mock interviews with students is to come up with star stories ahead of time before the interview. You are very likely going to be asked what are called behavioral based interview questions. The reason that these are popular is because the idea is that the best predictor of your future behavior is your past behavior. So you're going to be asked questions like, tell us about a time when you worked as part of a team. Tell us about a time when you faced a challenge. Tell us about a time when you had to be adaptable and flexible. Tell us about a time when you showed initiative. So these are questions that the interviewer asks in order to elicit storytelling on your part. Stories can be very effective in the interview. The more interesting the story, the better. So there is a great construction for your story. Sometimes when we tell stories in interviews, we might ramble, share unnecessary details, or get off track and forget what the question was in the first place. So the STAR technique helps keep our stories focused. We want to start by describing the situation, setting the background and context of your story. Focus on the task, what was required of you, the action that you took. Again, we wanna focus on our own actions, not the actions or inactions of anyone else in our story. And then we want to make sure to include the result of our actions. So this is an excellent formula to use when preparing your star stories before the interview. And again, you wanna think of your top three to five strengths as they relate to this position. So research that position description again, get a good understanding of what the company is looking for and what they need somebody to be able to do in this job. And then think of stories that illustrate your strengths so that they can see that you're highly capable of what you're interviewing for. And if you have these stories in your back pocket, they will very much help you with answering lots of different kinds of questions because we really never know what we're going to be asked in the interview. But if we can be prepared with what stories we want to tell, we're much more likely to be effective and present ourselves accurately in that interview. Throughout the interview itself, it is so important to be yourself. We can certainly try to be someone we're not, but the company will then get an inaccurate sense of who we are gonna be day to day. I often compare it to a first date. You can answer questions the way that you know the other person wants you to answer them and be likable and um, make a, an, an maybe initial connection. But if you're not yourself on that first date, six months later, nobody's happy. It's the same way with the job and your potential supervisor and teammates. We wanna be ourselves and answer as honestly as possible so that that company can get a good sense of our natural fit for the position. We spend a lot of time with our folks at the workplace. And so we wanna find that natural fit. We want to be intentional with our posture and our eye contact. And this goes for in-person interviews and virtual interviews as well. We want to lean forward a little bit so that we can communicate the interest in the conversation. And eye contact shows respect. We don't wanna have eye contact completely 100% of the time. That would be staring someone down and that's not a good idea but we want to maintain eye contact with everyone in the room. So for instance, if you're doing an interview with a panel, you want to give everyone eye contact as you're answering the questions. We want to be mindful of filler phrases, ums, and likes. This is something that many people struggle with 
And it can be hard to even identify if we're saying lots of ums and likes throughout our conversation. So this is where a mock interview comes in handy. Your interviewer is trained to keep an ear out for those filler phrases and give you tips on how to improve and minimize your frequency of saying these fillers. A tip that I like to share that I learned from a career counseling mentor who also had a background in theater and performance, she suggested that phrases like um and like are used because our mouth can't keep up with our brain. Our brain can sometimes move very quickly and talking sometimes we can um, get out of sync with our brain. So we want to slow down just a beat in the interview itself and use words like and instead of um or like to bridge our thoughts together. And also not to be afraid of a silent pause in between our phrases like I'm modeling for you right now. We don't want to slow down our speech so that it's inauthentic and not how we normally talk, but most people who are nervous might talk more quickly. So the more intentional we are and a little bit slower in our delivery, the less likely we are to have ums and likes. So that is a great thing for people to practice even outside of a mock interview. We want to be ready to talk about our weaknesses and our mistakes. So we are gonna focus on our strengths, but we are very likely to be asked by the interviewer, what is something we might want to improve upon? What is something that might make us not a great fit for this position? Or what's a mistake that you've made in the past and how did you try to fix it? We always want to include a positive aspect anytime we're discussing something negative about ourselves. So it's a good idea when you're asked about a weakness to not pick a strength and pretend like it's a weakness, okay? So uh, folks who do, who do interviews can spot when people are making things up and, and not really being genuine. So we do wanna pick something that we have tried to work on over the years. And we wanna also include what we've already done to improve upon that weakness. So if someone is naturally not comfortable as a public speaker, then they might mention that public speaking is something that does not come naturally to them, but that through their speech class at Lenore Ryan University, they've been able to work on techniques that help them with their public speaking. And while they're still, someone might still be nervous about doing public speaking, they might be able to talk about how they've improved upon that. Whenever you talk about mistakes, which everybody makes them, Again, make sure to include lessons learned and what you did to try to rectify that mistake. If you don't understand a question being asked of you, you can absolutely ask for them to rephrase the question. You want to make sure that you do understand the question before you start answering it. So that's something you can definitely do if needed. We also, in the interview, want to show curiosity about the company and the people that we're interviewing with. It's important to remember that an interview is not a tryout. You don't know if you wanna work for that company yet, unless you've interned with them or know the company in some other sort of way. You're checking them out just as much as they are checking you out. So you wanna ask questions based on the research that you've done and what you know is your ideal work environment. If you don't know what your ideal work environment is, that's something we can help you explore in a career counseling appointment. Asking about next steps is always a great question, and it's an opportunity to reiterate your interest in the opportunity. You could say something like, I've really enjoyed learning more about this opportunity with your organization today, and I'm even more excited that I'm being considered for the opportunity. What are next steps in the hiring process? That's a great thing to ask. It shows that you're very interested in the opportunity. We also should not ask about salary yet in the first interview unless they bring it up. If you're asked about your salary expectations, then you can talk about salary. But usually those details are reserved for a second interview or a conversation about the logistics 
of the job offer. There are questions that are illegal for an employer to ask you. Employers in this country should not discriminate against candidates because of race, color, religion, sex, including gender identity, sexual orientation and pregnancy, age, national origin or disability. Here is a great website that explains how to answer questions if you are asked them and you feel that they are illegal. Hopefully this will not happen to you, but it's good to be aware of your rights as a job seeker. Thank you notes are a great way to stand out from the crowd. So I include this funny meme from Star Wars, your lack of communication disturbs me. Um, because um, if a candidate does not write a thank you note, that might indicate to the employer that this person wasn't actually very interested in the opportunity. However, I will be honest with you, most candidates these days do not write thank you notes at all. So if you write one, then you are very likely to stand out from the crowd. And that could be the one thing that could put you above your competition and being selected for an opportunity. You can simply write an email thank you note. You do not have to write a handwritten note, especially if you have to mail it. The mail might take too long to get to the company. If you want to drop off a handwritten note to the company, that's a great thing to do, but it's not necessary. A basic thank you note sent via email to the people that you interviewed will go a long way. And we can help. Something that we love to help students with, with regarding interviews is practicing. Practice increases your confidence and allows you to work out any kinks that you may have in your communication style here with us and get non-judgmental constructive feedback in order to improve. We can also help you with the negotiation aspect of the interview. As I mentioned earlier, salary is something we want to be careful when we talk about that in interviews. Um, however, from the point of a job offer to acceptance is the negotiation period. And that is when you can negotiate for a higher salary or other benefits that you may want to have as part of your um, job before you accept that offer. Um, so that is definitely something that's very individual and unique depending on your situation and the job. So we can help you with that as well. We want to arm you with as much knowledge and information as possible in order for you to be as successful as possible in obtaining the opportunities that you are seeking. So we hope that these interview tips have been very helpful for you today. And we look forward to seeing you in the Career Center, either virtually or in person for your mock interview.